Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice, where thousands of you have been recommending today's song. I love this comment from our subscriber, Alan Clark, in particular. Any guy who can pay homage to Floor Jansen in Ghost Love Score at key deserves to be experienced in front of Elizabeth. Inspiration and exhilarating. I can't say no to that, so let's get to it. We have to shout out to Nightwish, and especially to Tuomas, who I believe was the main composer on this song. Ghost Love Score is a masterpiece. I love the different time signatures at the beginning here. It's just, it is exhilarating to hear the beginning of this, right? And I love the combination of classical and metal that you get in their sound. It's just, it's so awesome. But let's continue for now. There we go. I appreciate so much that he let us have this intro. Uh, so um, Giannis is his name, by the way, Giannis Papadopoulos. I learned how to say that from a video where he says his own name. So anyhow, I really appreciate that he let that build up be included in this video. I think it is just such a good build up and was a very smart decision on his end. Uh, his falsetto is ridiculous. <laughs> I I remember from the comment right that he sings this in the same key. But I thought you know what he probably started you know down an octave or something. No, he just starts it just as high as four. By the way, um, this song was the song where I first. Uh, fell in love with Flora's voice. So I, you just have to understand this has a very special place in my heart. And I am shocked by how well he's doing this. And the sound has that smoothness and the etherealness that I think is necessary to capture the right kind of ambiance here. Um, and he has really, really good control of his vibrato too. Okay, I'm gonna go back to his vocal entrance here. Is it, huh? huh? He also has really nice control already that you can hear of bringing in a little bit more core to the sound, which he gave just here kind of towards the end, um, had a lot more air at the beginning and then brought in a little more core. So it sounds like he's got some pretty good 
um, control of the tone quality of his falsetto. And uh, I, I also think he's got really good phrasing already happening. It's very, very nice. <laughs> I'll confess, I actually feel a little bit confused about the way he's blending different, essentially different muscle activations that are happening here. Um, so there's so much core that gets into his sound in this part. It sounds to me like he almost goes into head voice, or some people will call that mixed voice, kind of depending on what genre they've come from. I know that Giannis comes from a classical background, um, and he studied classical music, I believe, at a conservatory, specifically singing. So um, I'm going to stick with the words falsetto, head voice, chest voice for those main registers right now, chest being the lowest, then head, then falsetto. If we were to talk about pop music or... Um, some other contemporary genres, and essentially, sometimes you'll say chest voice and then mixed and then head, which is why you see a lot of conflict about what register it is sometimes online. Um, but we're going to stick with the classical um, classical names for these registers at the moment. So he's been singing primarily in his falsetto. It right? had this very almost detached. Again, ethereal is a great way to describe falsetto. It often feels a little bit hooty um, and floaty. And he's been singing primarily in that falsetto. It often, um, guys often can be mistaken for women when they're singing in their falsetto. That's a, one of the good ways to sort of recognize that tone quality. But then in this last section, he added so much more core into the sound and it started to have a more brassy texture to it, essentially. And at first I thought, okay, I think he's reinforcing his falsetto, which uh, it, it gets a little, that sometimes is disputed among people who study voice and say, well, what is reinforced falsetto exactly? And I would say, well, essentially your TA muscle engages a little bit more when your vocal folds are going wacka, wacka, wacka. Um, and some people say, oh, well, if the TA muscle is engaged at all, then you have TA and CT both engaging at the same time, thyroretinoid and cricothyroids, by the way, those are those two muscle groups in your larynx. And they would say, okay, well, since that's happening, then it's going to be head voice. Um, but uh, often reinforced falsetto will have just a teensy bit of engagement, so we don't know that we really see that mixture of the muscles as much. Anyhow, uh, it got to the point where it was so strong that I thought, dang, he might have just completely actually slipped into head voice. And this amazing control of being able to go back and forth that fluidly is shocking to me. It's truly shocking. It's confusing. I'm really curious how he feels that in his, in his voice. I know very, very few men. There are some that have that smooth of a transition between falsetto and head voice. Um, he might be one of them, um, but that is truly special and extremely rare. I'm going to go back a little bit now. <laughs> I'd say that was still false. And here it sounds like it's switching. 
almost to a full belt up here. Meaning that it would be in head voice, not falsetto at all. He decrescendos off of memory up there makes me think that's back in falsetto. It's really hard to do a decrescendo when you're at the top of a register. Um, if you're at the very, very, very top, you tend to be louder and to be able to do this really nice, delicate decrescendo controlled vibrato and everything off of it, that's a, that's crazy, crazy difficult. I wonder if he flowed in, in that last phrase, he might've done a switch and had some reinforced falsetto to sort of um, blend and uh, and mask that switch of the registers there. Uh, I'm gonna go back just like On in, the way he digs into that with a little bit of a glottal attack, that makes me think, okay, um, we've got a lot more core sound in the voice. I think this is head voice here. On the, he might have gone into more of a reinforced falsetto feeling. It's also totally possible that because he feels, he might feel total fluidity between those registers at this point and not really think about, oh, I'm gonna be in this register or this one. He might just think, I want this kind of tone quality and then the registration automatically happens. Uh, if you are trying this at home, most people need to be pre-planning that sort of registration negotiation. But if you're this good, Sometimes you don't need to think about it anymore. Okay, let's keep going. It's so pretty. A siren from the deep came to me saying my name, my longing. Still Ooh. About that dream of mine. So when it's opening into the open vowels there, I feel like that is very definitely falsetto, but he starts it off, I think, in head voice in places. Anyhow, I'm gonna stop obsessing over this. I promise I won't obsess over it as much. I, but my voice coach, voice science brain is wanting desperately to think about every single note and what register he's using. <laughs> A siren from the deep came to me saying my name, my longing. Still I write my songs about that dream of mine. Where that rhythm I may ever be. The child. I love the way he sort of creaked into ever and the way he's breathing with it too. It makes it sound like his breath is so attached to all of the expression that he's making and it makes it feel like one big phrase rather than little phrases that are divided up by breaths. I have to say the little cries that he's adding as well um, just really add to that feeling of longing and desperation. And I think that they're very um, stylistic, they just really work for him and give us that extra bit of oomph from below. It's nice. <laughs> oh, that was him shifting the mic down and winking at us at the same time. <laughs> oh. That's kind of 
kind of cool to see his mouth moving and obviously going along with the guitar sounds. I think I read that he had taught himself guitar. So he also is an accomplished musician. And I think it's it's fascinating to see that he's got specific mouth shapes that might go with what notes or what sounds the guitar is making. Let's go back just a little bit. <laughs> this is such a masterpiece. One of the things I just hugely appreciate about uh, this break in the music is the orchestration of it. Uh, it was really well written for all of the instruments playing. Uh, you hear the strings in long extended lines. That is something string instruments can do very well, right? They're not inhibited by having to take a breath to continue a note. Uh, flutes, you just heard a bunch of flutes and probably I think it was doubled by a piccolo on top. Um, they're really great at fast runs like that. Um, there, I think, I think we might have had a bassoon in there. There's like a boop, 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 boop. Bassoons have this fun lower character and they can have little staccati in it that helps it pop out of the texture. And same thing, at one point I think we heard an oboe and oboes are really great at popping out of the texture of an orchestra for a solo line. They have, um, it's one of the reasons that they are the instrument that an orchestra will tune to. Um, but it, yeah, it has a, a great reedy sound that makes way for itself in an orchestra. Anyhow, it, the orchestration is just really, really well done for each instrument. And beautifully mixed. That is awesome power, awesome endurance, really, just really great focus on his sound. And he's keeping that focus through the whole phrase too. He's essentially threading it. So his voice is always, always, always present. And it has the same ring on it. Um, it's like it would look very similar. Each note would have a similar profile, essentially, if you're looking at it with like a spectrogram or some sort of um, visual analysis of the frequencies that we're hearing. And so um, he has great focus and continuity in his resonance placement. It's really, really nice. It gives it a great line. I'm going to go back a little bit. I also, I love the way um, he does a similar thing to Floor at one point where he kind of speak growls off of a lower note. It sounds really good.
also just really, really excellent pitch. It's great. It's on every single time. <laughs> that distortion was really, really, really well done. You can you can just tell from the core of his sound that it's not interfering with the really great production that he's got going on. Also, I just don't think as somebody who studied extensively in classical singing and obviously has as much control and care for his instrument, I don't think he would be risking hurting his instrument with this kind of distortion. Um, I like the way it sounds. Um, oh, it sounds like it's manic at times. Uh, it really gets like very crunchy, essentially. <laughs> when we go back. Oh. I got so distracted by the distortion, I didn't talk about how cool that top note is. It sounds really, really well supported. And um, yeah, I think you'd have to have extremely low support for that. And at the same time, it's got some roundness to it that makes it sound a little more classical too. He's got really good control of having the sound forward or more round in the back. It's fascinating how he's got moments where he's adding more or less of it and comes in and out of it. He's really, it feels like it's on the edge of insanity. And at the same time, I just think, how could somebody insane have that much control? It's fantastic, just truly fantastic. Wow. Orchestration! sort of little extra side note in here. The addition of the brass is part of what makes this sound uh, so big and heroic at this point. And of course, we've got lots of other additional contemporary elements that are helping out with that as well. But I love, I love the brass in this section. I love the feeling it brings. <laughs> That ha 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 section, I think I even said this with Flora the first time I heard her do this. It's really important that you have a good onset right there, which is the moment that the breath connects with the vocal folds and they start going wacka wacka wacka. You have to make sure that that is coordinated. So you don't have too much breath initially and your vocal folds don't try to start initially. And it sounds um, when it's, perfectly done. It has this mm, wonderful quality. And I feel like he's doing a really gorgeous onset here. And additionally, I was paying attention to the roundness that he did here as well. He's rounding his mouth. He's definitely making it have 
uh, a lovely, more choral-like sound. Great control, once again, of his tone quality. Let's go back a little bit to that section. I just love that he's able to so efficiently move from that roundness to this very forward placement. And he gets much more of a pop sound than in this section, um, right? You hear a lot more, it sounds almost more narrow in the sound, it has more like point in it as well. He's just very, very good at moving back and forth between these two, so much control. Okay. <sighs> Really good breath control. The phrasing is excellent. I love that he saved enough juice to really do that nice slide at the end of this one. Uh, it's just well measured and very steady as well. Fantastic. So like just a little bit. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That top top note with that power and that focus, and then extending it and working on a really steady vibrato with it to all of those things combined. Ugh, she's just technically so ridiculously good. Ugh. Wow. I have developed so much additional respect for Giannis Papadopoulos. He has an insane amount of control over his voice. And we didn't even go into the, the lows. This was all just the highs, which tend to be much more difficult to control. I, my mind is still buggered out by how he was negotiating some of that registration transition I, man, I would love to talk to him about how he thinks about his registers and how he smooths that out. Oh, it was just totally extraordinary. And yeah, oh, so much respect. Wow. Well, if you guys want to hear more things like this, we're, we put together a playlist and it's got Ghost Love Score on it. It's got some Beast in Black too, and a couple other things you might enjoy. So check that out. And I hope I'll see you in another video again soon. Thank you so much for this amazing recommendation.